The FOMC meeting concluded with a raise of 25 basis points along with Jerome Powell announcing no plans to pause rates in the foreseeable future. We're going to be taking a look at the higher time frame and smaller time frame to discuss the implications of this, what the trend is looking like and the next move for Bitcoin. Let's go ahead guys and jump into the video. Okay, Mega World team, welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to take a look at Bitcoin on the higher time frame trend and, of course, the small time frame. Discussing the next move, the trigger points, our targets, the technicals, the structural analysis, the market data, and, of course, the FOMC meeting. We're going to be running through everything today, so stick around until the end. Now, if you're interested in this kind of content, content that covers all of the basis with no shilling, no hype, no BS, no emotion, you are in the right place. Consider smashing the like button, hitting that comment button, and of course, subscribing to the channel. We do daily videos on Bitcoin, focusing on the facts and the objective data. If you're interested in more of that kind of content, you can join us on Telegram. That will be the second link down below. You'll get access to updates, news events, charts, analysis, educational posts, information, everything you need to navigate the markets on a daily basis from a factual and objective point of view. You can also join our Telegram channel. This is our VIP group. You'll get access to trading signals and of course, exclusive analysis, exclusive updates, a whole bunch of educational material. And of course, guys, you'll also get access to our group chat. In our group chat, we have numerous chats in here. We have our trading chart and education chat. We have our general chat. We have altcoin analysis chat. We have extra videos and of course a help chat. Everything is designed to keep you guys on your toes and keep you educated, trade and learn along the way, guys. Go ahead and contact me. More information can be found in that pinned comment. And of course, all the trading track records can also be found in that link in that free channel guys go ahead and get around it let's get into a video today guys talking about bitcoin a lot to discuss obviously of fomc and we're going to go ahead and start off with the market data and i do want to actually move that up to the side because i want to show you uh the upcoming news events as well for the month pretty uh, pretty soon so market data for the month let's take a look my uh April, we ended 2.81% in the green. Again, a month of basically stagnation. From what I've seen, we had January was very volatile. February was basically uh, consolidation. March was very volatile. And now, of course, April has been basically a stagnation following into May. And May is a pretty important month because historically, May has been a here and there month. We've seen a little bit of bullishness. We've seen a little bit of bearishness. Generally, for cryptocurrency, however, May historically has been actually quite a decent month. But... That doesn't mean much because what is important is where we are in the charts, what the structures are saying, what the, econo uh, what the economic data is saying, the drivers of price action is significantly more important than what we have seen in terms of return on investment monthly in the past, but something to keep in mind on. 24 hour liquidations is sitting just under 100 million, up around 104%, and 24 hour volume is sitting around 87 billion. We didn't actually see a massive reaction on FOMC. We didn't see as much volatility uh, and sporadicness in price action that we usually do see. So it was actually quite a tame FOMC meeting. And I think the reason to that was because the expected interest rate of 25 basis point was very much anticipated for a while now. It was it was almost anticipated, it was expected. So there wasn't a lot of confusion and definitely not a lot of um a lot of people on either side of the fence are moving into it. It was much more expected and thus with more expected result, we get less volatility. Volatility index on the 30 day over here is 2.16 on the 60 day. Uh, we have seen it climb up just a tad. We're sitting at 2.92. And liquidations for the last 24 hours, guys, in that 15-minute period interval, we can see a whole bunch of longs and a whole bunch of shorts liquidated. So a little bit of a give and take. Let's get into the market data. The DXY is pushing back down into its major support level. And as you would know, we said the DXY is inversely correlated to cryptocurrency and thus inversely correlated to the stock market. When we see a DXY fall, it represents a decrease in the US dollar value. Now, the US dollar decreases, asset prices, particularly risk asset prices in, con in correlation, increase. So we get assets rising in value, generally. Now I say generally, because there's an inverse correlation of around 70%. So not always, but generally, the higher time frame directions are in tune, but the smaller time frame fluctuations can be opposing. So, looking at the higher time frame levels are very important. If we do manage to lose this higher time frame support level at 
this 108 point. This is a 300 plus day long support. We're going to see the DXY drop. If we see the DXY drop, we're going to see cryptocurrency rally. We're going to see the stock market rally. Keep that in mind. Alternatively, if we break this downtrend over here that we have been developing since November, you can see if we break upwards over here, we are going to see a flip in this narrative. We are going to see the stock market rally. We are a drop. We are going to see the Bitcoin price drop as well. Now, it's no coincidence that we started to see the DXY fall down at the same time we started to see Bitcoin rally. Now we're getting to that. Bitcoin started moving upwards in around November, December last year. That is when we started building bullish strength. If you've been watching the charts, if you've been following the channel, you would know that we said around about this period, we were buying 18 to 16,000. But we said during this period, from August to December, we noticed decreasing momentum, decreasing velocity, decreasing liquidity, decreasing volume, all signs of bullish compression as the downtrending slope of this pattern was a lot less steep than the downtrending slope of the pattern we broke out of. Thus, we have a shift from strong downtrend to weak downtrend, and a weak downtrend after a strong, strong downtrend can suggest bullish compression. And did it suggest a bullish compression and thus a bullish reversal? We saw a break upwards. Since we saw that break upwards, we've been seeing the DXY fall. There is a strong correlation towards the inverse on these assets. Here is the thing, and I'm going to go over this really quickly before we get to Bitcoin. With FOMC, we see a pattern like this. Interest rates are one of the biggest determinants of higher time frame macro price action for risk assets. It's one of the largest determinants because risk assets move on perceived systematic risk, but more importantly, they move based on the cost of debt. If the cost of debt drops, companies are more likely to acquire assets on debt and use those assets as income producing assets that, uh, that create cash flow and that raises the stock prices of the companies. Now, if interest rates are dropping or low, companies are more aggressive with acquiring those loans to acquire assets. If interest rates fall, expenditure for households decreases, debt to service ratios decrease, available cash flow increases, households, individual, retail investors are more likely to invest the prices rally. So we see interest rates, they have gone up, okay? This is negative, below this line is pivot. They've been going up. Since we started peaking in interest rates, this is when we said the markets are gonna to start to rally, okay? Because markets move on perceived systematic risk. So since then we saw the interest rates fall and fall and fall. We're kind of over here now, we're at 0 0.25, right? We're around this point over here. That's kind of what we are sitting at around now. The total interest rate is 5.25%, but we're sitting around 0 0.25. If we look at the overall increases, say for example, that was 75 basis points, 50 basis points, and now 0 0.25, and we're kind of plateauing now. So the overall perceived systematic risk is calculated as the general perceived trend of this downward move. And therefore this perceived trend is still plotting downwards, meaning there is an overall perception that interest rates are still moving towards a pivot. And as long as that remains, as long as that narrative remains, the markets are gonna continue upwards. They may come down a little bit, they may retrace 10, 20%, but they will continue on the macro trajectory upwards. And that is what we've been saying. Every single pullback for Bitcoin should be considered a healthy pullback until the trend breaks, until the narrative breaks. Where does that happen? We'll get into it in just a moment. Let's finish up with that on the Dow Jones and, and S&P 500. Dow Jones and S&P 500 have retraced from their major resistance levels, but they have come down and found their local supports at the POC and of course the local our neckline we retested during this head and shoulder pattern right over here, we retest that neckline. So potential flipping point for the uh, S&P, potential flipping point for the Dow Jones. We have a overall slightly bullish narrative now moving into the short term, moving in to the higher time frame again, because we have got a decently positive announcement from the Federal Reserve in terms of interest rates based on perceived systematic risk. Remember, perceived systematic risk is what the markets move on, not actual systematic risk. Look at the trajectory of the future interest rate hikes to determine how the market is perceiving the current increase. Okay, and that is where the market is going to move towards. So, Bitcoin, we are still in an uptrend. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable, and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our Mega Well promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that, guys, BitGet is a non KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. 
BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing up to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. Been saying this, we have seen glimmers of weakness. We had massive glimmers of weakness. We are still in an uptrend, however. What we can see is 30,000 is still being retested. 30,000 to 28,000 is a massive level of resistance. In fact, it is the yearly low of the prior bull run cycle. We're gonna go over it and then we'll get into the short term and the technicals. Bull run, this is our bull run, okay? This is our four year cycle. As we can see, every single prior cycle has a bull run low. The bull run low being this major horizontal base of support that we developed a lot of support along for a numerous amount of months, generally around a year before breaking down and then moving towards our absolute bottom. We saw it in 2015, we saw it in 2018. We saw it again in 2022. We held that base of support, we lost that support, we saw an increase in volatility taking us all the way down to the bottom where we bottomed out, we created a reversal structure like we did over here, like we did over here, exactly like we did over here, we have rallied back upwards. We are now retesting that yearly low of the prior cycle. This yearly low is sitting at 30,000. The $30,000 level is the most significant level right now for Bitcoin, not the most significant level in general, but right now, to enter a macro uptrend, to validate a macro uptrend, we need to close a monthly candle above that level. I don't care what you say, I don't care what it is, it doesn't matter, that is what the charts are saying, that is the facts. We have seen historically, every time we close a monthly candle above that level, we actually continue upwards to our dotted line. Now, what is our dotted line and why is it significant? If we look at the prior bull run, the first dead cap bounce, the first dead cap bounce takes us towards that dotted line. Finally, the first dead cap bounce takes us towards the dotted line. Every time we close a monthly candle above the dotted line, right over here, right over here, that is when volatility, volume, speed, and velocity increase. That is the trigger for a continuation toward a new all-time high. So the macro uptrend trigger is 30,000. The all-time high trigger is 48,000. And the bull run requires two things to occur. Number one, the date range trend needs to cross, meaning we need to see the halvening, and we generally are going to see the date range trend cross. If we look at prior bull run cycles, bear run cycles, and neutral zones, we can see we generally see around 17 bars, which is 17 months from bear market bottom to when the bull run initially starts. Now, we will see a strong move. Like I said already, we generally see a couple hundred percent rally before the bull run starts, and that is going to be the same instance we have already seen 88%. Just because we have seen 80%, 8% rally upwards, it doesn't mean we're in a bull run. We are bullish. We are bullish. We're daily bullish. We're weekly bullish, but we are not macro bullish yet. We're on the verge of it. We're the verge of breaking out. We're on the tip of the iceberg. We're not quite there yet. We're really close, guys, but we're not quite there. Let's take a look at the Mahai time frame again, do a quick TA, and then jump into the daily, and then jump back into the short term to discuss the next move for Bitcoin. This is so much to talk about, guys. So, really quickly, TA on the monthly chart, you can see our $30,000 resistance is that red box. You can see the price is over 50 EMA and the price has pushed over the smaller time frame move average. It's absolutely phenomenal stuff to see. We are starting to see a lot of strength develop on that higher time frame in terms of our moving averages, but we are still under our Gaussian channel resistance. We do need a break above that Gaussian channel. And again, the Gaussian channel is going to be acting as resistance up until around 31,200. Now, if we go back to this small time frame chart, you can see we do have a liquidity zone sitting around that level, 31,200 to 32,000. This is a key level we do actually need to break above. And again, this could act as a major rejection point for Bitcoin if we do not break above it. As if we do break above that level, we will be pushing up to 30, Eight to 40,000. We can validate and confirm that based on our VRPV. If we look at our volume ranges, we can see according to the volume ranges, we have a slight gap between 32.5 to 38. So we do know this area here is a lower resistance range between the distance of 30,000 and 40,000, meaning if we get above 32.5, we are going to see volatility, speed, and velocity increase. 
But like I said already, that can all happen. But if we do not close a monthly candle above 30,000, it's not going to matter. We could see a rally past 30,000 this month. We could see a break into 32,000. If we don't get the monthly close above 30,000, nothing else really matters right now. Let's go back guys and talk about that chart and then we'll really get stuck into it. So one more indicator. Uh, I wanted to bring up was of course going to be the RSI and then we'll get into a daily. So the RSI, you can see over here, the RSI is kind of slowing down a little bit. We have had a break upwards of that moving average of 14 moving average is suggesting bullish momentum is building. We are starting to see bullish momentum. Of course, we had bearish momentum fading over here. We had a breakout. We had bullish momentum uh, starting to build. We do need to st start seeing some of these local tops over here on the RSI clear to get these shifts in momentum. Another way we can take a look at it is of course a market side of B. And of course you can see on the market side of B, if I bring it up in one second, you'll be able to see a very similar thing, but it'll be a little bit more detailed. So let's bring up the market side of B. Market side of B, you can see over here, we have bearish momentum according to the market side of B, okay? Because the blue bar is underneath the zero point line, but we have strengthening bearish momentum. So on the monthly chart, we still aren't in a macro uptrend yet. We do have the price over moving averages. We're underneath our resistances. We're under, underneath our boiling bangs. We don't have that positive bullish momentum yet. We do need to get that positive bullish momentum. And that will really only happen above 30,000 to get that trigger, okay? Let's go back to the daily chart and discuss what is happening. So the uptrend is currently still very much intact and it will remain intact, like I said, until two things happen. We need to see, well, three things. We need to see structural. We need to see technical and we need to see our trend line uh, invalidation. So number one, structural, we have our major resistance here, very key. Trend line invalidation, we need to see our horizontal support right over here be lost. If 24.4K is lost, that is when the uptrend is technically in threat. Until then, the uptrend is intact. Every rally, every bounce down, every correction should be considered healthy unless 25.2 to 24.4 is lost. If we lose that level, we are now deviating above a yearly long resistance as we deviate below, and that puts us back into the horizontal consolidation range we had between this date here all the way across. That is very, very bad Bitcoin that could push the price lower. But again, it is very unlikely that occurs unless the macro environment, the macro narrative around interest rates shift because the macro economic data, specifically interest rates, is the key driver for price action. The price doesn't move based on technical indicators and, and market patterns, blah, 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 blah. Okay, the key macro drivers is economic data. The technical indicators and market structures is just a way of analyzing the expected trajectory of the price. But the actual driver, what pushes the price action is the economic data, okay? The characteristics of price action we can use to analyze the strength of trends is volume, momentum, speed, velocity, liquidity, okay? These things over here, these can be used to analyze price strength, the strength of price action, and we use TA, okay? To determine these characteristics, and then we use an analysis of this to determine where the price is going to go based on structural analysis. So a good way to do it is to do your structural analysis, okay, do your TA, get an understanding of these metrics, and then apply probabilities based on the strength of the price action to structural levels, okay? Very simple stuff, guys, but again, it does take some time to get used to. Uh, so... As long as we remain about that, we're bullish. When are we losing the uptrend? Uptrend is lost when we break two things. Number one, the short-term horizontal support at 27,000. You can see the base of support sitting right over here. If this level is lost, bang, there goes that uptrend on the smaller time frame. That takes us down to this range. We retest. If we lose this level, we are out of the uptrend. Two, the loss of the 50 EMA, guys, is going to be deadly for Bitcoin here. If we lose the 50 EMA, that is going to trigger a move toward the downside like we saw over here. Here is a significant shift in momentum and a shift in the trend strength. Again, if we do lose a 50 EMA, we will be pushing downwards. We'll be retesting 27. Another one is going to be the midline of the Gorsan channel. Again, that's going to cross over 27. So again, if we lose 27, we lose the midline. And that will indicate that bearish volume is increased. Bearish momentum is increased. Bearish speed and velocity will increase. And bearish liquidity will increase. That signifies the strength of the price action has decreased. Simple stuff. Let's get into a smaller time frame. So how do we map all this out? How do we look at it? How do we see what's going on? This is the chart. 27 to 26.8K. You can see this is our major support. We are technically bullish on the smaller time frame until this level is lost. If we lose this level, we see a huge volume gap right over here, taking us to 25.2 to 24.4. We'll drag it across, okay? 
you can see a huge gap over here representing a low resistance range meaning the price doesn't require as much volume okay to push from this level here to this level here if we do not require as much volume because the resistance level is low what does that mean all right take low volume or low volume requirements plus low resistance what does that mean it means we have increased guess what we have increased speed and we have increased velocity okay but well, speed and velocity is determined by volume and resistance if we have increased speed and velocity after breaking a support we have bearish momentum we, we have downtrending strength if we have bearish momentum bearish speed and velocity that means the strength of a trend is weak okay we are in a weak trend or another way to say it, we are in a strong downtrend on a smaller time frame when will that occur break under 27 but until we do that we are up we are an uptrend the short-term uptrend trend line is intact this uptrend trend line is intact you can see it right over here along with that we have support zones you can see these green levels are support zones our trigger zones right over here and of course liquidity zones this is our current resistance we're retesting so let's dive into the small time frame and take a deeper look in just one moment but i want to say really quickly for the price to break back about thirty thousand, we need to absolutely clear this level here we absolutely need to clear this level you can see this level is a local low a pinching point in the area of massive liquidity where we saw massive spikes above into these resistances a few times this is a key trigger point 29.4k is the trigger for a continuation to 30,000. Okay, let's get into a small time frame and discuss what is going on and then complete a technical analysis. As you can see, the price is starting to consolidate underneath resistance. This is a sign of weakness, guys. This is a sign of weakness right now. Again, it can be, it can, well, I guess it can be, it can be perceived two ways. You can either see consolidation under resistance as strength or you can see as weakness. Again, to determine whether it's strength or weakness, we need to look at momentum, okay? Because consolidation under resistance with bullish momentum is bullish. Consolidation under resistance with bearish momentum is bearish. So we need to find the overall trajectory of this trend. However, really quickly, four hour chart, okay, at resistance. Let's go down to a three hour chart. You can see we've printed a doji candle over here. We got two hours and 51 minutes left. This is a smaller candle. The bodies are decreasing in size. The wicks are increasing in size. It suggests we have a decreasing momentum, decreasing velocity, and decreasing volume in these ranges. It overall expresses that we are at resistance and we do have weakness. So we do need to see a surge in volume to push upwards here. Otherwise, we are going to face a bit of a challenge. So let's get into a smaller time frame and discuss what's going on. 15 minute chart. Let's get into it, guys. What we can see over here is we can see a potential, okay? A potential ascending channel. An ascending channel is, of course, a bearish structure. This is a consolidation that is upwards overall does result in a break to the downside so again regardless of whether or not this trend line is validated what we are looking at is of course this support resistance zone here and the key level which is going to be this trend line breaking down below this upward trending line will take the price back into this range 28 to 27.8 of course if we lose that range we go lower until then we do have a chance to break upwards but i wouldn't expect anything too much until this range breaks if we do manage to break above this level 24.9 not just a wick but close above there get some solid candles up there we are going to see this trend continue toward the upside definitely keep that in mind guys let's go back to a four hour and do a ta and then wrap up the video because we are going on for a bit longer over here from a technical perspective guys starting on the 12 hour let's see we have we've tampered around the 50 ma a fair bit we've seen weakness we've seen strength we've seen weakness we've seen strength it's been a little bit messy always is messy when fomc comes around the corner bring up rsi guys we can see we do have our decreasing rsi over here we can see the rsi is generally decreasing we have an uptrend on rsi over here that matches the uptrending price action so we do have rising momentum and we're going to quickly use the marcus ib just to verify that because the marcus ib does show us a little bit more specifically where those shifts in momentums are so we can see we do have rising momentum we've had a little bit of weakness in the momentum but more or less we're hanging around as a neutral zone overall we are rising so momentum is rising on the 12 hour chart let's go down to the four hour chart and take a look again four hour chart we can see momentum is still negative it is still bearish but it is rising we have strengthening negative momentum i'd be looking at our trend lines here key trigger points looking at these trends breaking over these trend lines will be key looking at where these trend lines line up if we draw that trend line in and we take our resistance range at 29,400 to 29,200 it kind of matches up with that trend line so we do know we have an area of confluence here areas of confluence are key resistances slash 
key trigger points. So we can, so if we break over 29.4K, we are likely to hold this breakout as we do have a significant area of what would turn into support. So watch that there, guys. Until then, the short term is not looking amazing. I would say it's not looking amazing. We are consolidating underneath this resistance over here. You can see we are really fighting. Bulls and bears are really fighting here. We've seen a few drops. We've seen a few attempts of a 50 EMA on the smaller, smaller time frame. You know, we've dropped under this a few times. We're hanging on. If we do get a push upwards, I'd expect a push back upwards into the 29.2 to 29.4 range. But again, I don't expect anything too significant to occur unless 29.4 is able to be broken. Looking at the smaller time frame, guys, we do have a uptrending support kind of de developing over here. Again, this is very messy price action. You can see we've had numerous uptrending supports. One, two, three. They keep getting broken and pushed lower. So we do have a degree of strength de developing on a smaller time frame. Um, but I wouldn't be making too many decisions right now. If this trend line does break, I'd be looking for a move back down towards these supports. Again, all of these levels that we did break above yesterday, this 28 point, uh, 20, uh, 8.8 .8 level is going to be a major support. And of course, pushing downwards, we do have that uptrending support of the channel. Until then, guys, it does look pretty decent. Again, we could potentially see that swing high into that liquidity zone at around 29.4 to 29.2. But I wouldn't be expecting too much until that occurs. Just scalp trade, trade the trend, try jump into a few scalps. The price action has been full of leverage traps lately. Absolutely crazy to be trading. The game with a lot of news events coming out this month, such as NFP, unemployment, core inflation, and PPI. We are going to see this month be a little bit volatile. This month's gonna be a little bit harder month to trade. This month's gonna be a little bit more messy. Um, but just try to zoom out and trade the higher time trends. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you tomorrow.